Right now at noon, Joplin prepares to move forward with a demolition of a viaduct five years after it was closed due to safety concerns. And we are hot and breezy out there today, at least for October standards. We'll talk about the temperatures, some additional rain chances, and when we might see a cool down coming up. Plus, the Joplin City Council here's pleas to save Memorial Hall. The four states most watched news starts now. The Joplin City Council last night heard pleas to save Memorial Hall. This is KOM News at noon. I'm Elise Snowy. Now, it seemed for some time that the days were numbered for Joplin's Memorial Hall. The Joplin City Council had voted in June to pursue steps to demolish the building. But at last night's meeting, the council heard from people arguing that the nearly 100 year old structure is worth saving. Memorial Hall has really served as a heartbeat of the community for nearly a century. To support the restoration of Memorial Hall, um, we want the city council to explore every possibility. The Memorial Hall was built in 1925 as a tribute to war veterans. Over the generations, it served as a venue for such diverse events as speaking tours, concerts and circuses. Well, it looks like Joplin is about ready to move forward with the demolition of the Pennsylvania Avenue viaduct. Now, the viaduct was closed roughly five years ago after failing a safety inspection in 2019. And in 2021, officials requested bids from engineering firms to help with the demolition and removal of the viaduct. But the Joplin Public Works Director says demolition has never been able to be done due to a lack of funds. But using money from the city's capital improvement fund, they hope to demolish the bridge to coincide with a MoDOT plan for a drainage system improvement on 7th Street. If they put their project out to bid, then we have to have our project ready to go on a similar time frame. Um, and one of the things uh, that we will, of course, have to do if we're going to run a, uh, a new drainage culvert right through where that bridge is, is we have to remove the bridge first. Because plans have not been approved or finalized, there isn't a projected date for demolition. Now, the Public Works Director says they are working to get work done as soon as possible and to be the first to see breaking news, weather and sports. You can download the KOM News app. It's available free of charge in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. Just search for the KOM News app. Now let's check in with Chris Warner for a look at the forecast. <music> Yeah, we've been hot, we've been breezy, we've had sunny skies out there. So look from the MoDOT camera a little earlier this morning. Not bad. I mean, it looks nice. It's just not seasonable out there. Our camera downtown Pittsburgh, we've had those winds occasionally gusting again, upwards 30, in some cases even 40 miles an hour. We started yesterday at 52, should have been at 46, made it up to 84. We are closing in on record highs out there because our average is 69. And we take a look at the temperature trend. This white line here that you can see, that's where we should be. This is where we have been. This is where we're going. Not much in terms of average temperatures across the area. As we head through the rest of the evening, some good news at least. The winds will ease up a little bit as we head through the evening hours and into the overnight. Skies expected to remain clear. And while we've got a mild lead into the evening, low 70s, upper 60s by 11, we'll still fall back a little. Still not near normal, but back into the upper 50s, low 60s. As I mentioned, we have a couple of cold fronts. One tomorrow, it's not going to do a lot for us but we will see some slight rain chances details coming up. All right, thanks, Chris. Well, it may feel nice here in the four states today, but soon the weather will cool down here as well. And if you're considering getting a space heater, the Carl Junction Fire Chief recommends you make sure it's a certified space heater and that it's plugged directly into the wall, not a power strip. These heaters being plugged into uh, power strips uh, and what ends up happening actually is the power strip itself will catch on fire because it's too much current and uh, even if it even by that point in time once it shuts down um, it's still live and it and it creates a fire situation there. Which the fire chief also says to watch out for older model space heaters because many don't have the safety measures newer models have. 
Well, officials with the Missouri Department of Transportation say they're already preparing for winter weather. Now they're hoping to get their staff familiar with both the equipment and the routes they might have. Now workers are starting to install plows and spreaders on their trucks, and they're also going out and driving the routes to familiarize themselves and to look for any obstacles before they have to work and worry about snow and ice. So we want to start in early fall so that we, we've got plenty of time if we identify any deficiencies in our equipment, um, we can get all that um, corrected and, and uh, make sure that our equipment is 100% and, and ready to go for, for when the weather gets here. MoDOT officials say by checking their equipment in this way, they're able to have faster response times when winter weather does arrive. Well, coming up, a local family is preparing for this year's Four States Hard Walk with a special reason to participate. And later, we're making worth the wait cabbage soup in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Well, applications are now open for Kansans hoping to have more access to high speed internet. Now, the Kansas Office of Broadband Development is deploying more than $450 million to bring high speed internet to all of Kansas. Now, the goal of the program is to support education, health care and workforce growth. Eligible applicants include local and tribal governments, nonprofit organizations and others authorized authorized rather to provide broadband services. Applications opened today and closed December 5th. Well, the Cherokee County Health Department hosted an outreach clinic yesterday in Galena. Now workers were ready to help with programs such as lead testing and answering eligibility questions for Medicaid and WIC. The clinic staff say their goal is to meet with the community and help them in whatever way they can. Um, if they can't make it to the clinics, we try everything we can to get them on WIC, and if they can't necessarily participate in the program, we give them resources to help them either acquire food or formula for baby. Or the Cherokee County Health Department has held similar clinics in Columbus and Baxter Springs. Well, a local family is preparing for this year's American Heart Association Four States Heart Walk with a special reason to participate. Their son Charlie, a soon to be three year old from Alba, Missouri, has been battling a rare heart condition since infancy. I had the chance to tell their story. For most families, Halloween is a time of costumes and candy. But for Charlie Kenedjian and his family, it marks a different milestone. Charlie turns three this year after a fight that started before he could even crawl. At just seven weeks old, his heart began racing over 250 beats per minute. He was soon diagnosed with a rare congenital heart condition. Since white is an extra electrical pathway on your heart that causes it to beat off rhythm um, or cause many other funky things to occur to your heart. Um, right now it's being treated with medication three times a day. Um, every eight hours, he's got to take an oral syringe with uh, a certain medication that causes it or helps it uh, from acting up. Since his diagnosis, Charlie has undergone multiple surgeries and takes medication to manage his condition. But his future remains uncertain as doctors continue to monitor his heart's development. His parents, Tiffany and Derek, shared the difficulty of knowing more challenges may lie ahead. We got told in April, um, I got a phone call from his cardiologist on the way home from work, and she said, we're sending him to the heart failure team. We're having surgery in a month. Despite the difficulties, Charlie's parents are full of hope and gratitude for the support and research provided by the American Heart Association, which has been instrumental in finding new treatments for heart conditions like his. If the funding wasn't there for research, there probably wouldn't be very much treatment for our son mm -mm. or many other kids. Uh, so yeah. I think the American Heart Association, with what they're doing, with uh, collecting funds to donate. I mean, it could be helping anybody. As Charlie continues to fight, his family wants to give back by participating in the Four States Heart Walk, helping to raise awareness for heart disease and the families affected by it. Even if it's just awareness, what the Heart Association is doing with shedding light on his condition might inspire somebody. 
might inspire a kid. I mean, <laughs> might want to become a doctor one day and put all the effort in and discover things. Charlie's story is a reminder of how vital heart health research is and how every step in the heart walk brings hope to families like his. Well, the four states heart walk takes place this Saturday at the Leggett and Platt Center at Missouri Southern. To register to walk or to donate to the American Heart Association, you can visit koemnewsnow.com for the details. Well, still to come on KOM News at noon, Mr. Food. Today, we've got a few tips so you don't lose a lifetime of recipes and memories. Stick around and I'll show you. We are tracking some shower chances, maybe an isolated thunderstorm or two. We'll talk about that and this heat when we come back. Welcome back to the KOAM News at noon. So it is a nice day except for that wind. Unfortunately, it's a nice day if this was, say, mid-September and not late October. Let's take a quick look outside. This is the MoDOT camera at 20th and Range Line from just not long ago. Skies are clear. The sun is shining. It is breezy. And like I said, if this was mid-September, this would be a perfect day. Unfortunately, as I mentioned, too, it's not mid-September. Our camera downtown Pittsburgh, take a look at it shaking just uh, not long ago because we've had those winds out there gusting upward of 30 to 40 miles an hour and that's how it's going to remain at least through the afternoon and early evening before the winds will start to give us a bit of a break out there. So again, our temperatures today, some are very likely to either tie or potentially break record highs, especially the further west you are. So Yates Center, Chanute, Fredonia, Coffeyville, Bartlesville could even reach some low 90s out there before you start to cool back down. As I mentioned, though, as we go overnight, the winds will begin to calm down for us just a bit and temperatures. And it's so interesting. Some of the place, same places that could have record highs today are going to be some of the cooler places when we start our day tomorrow. Now we have a cold front that's going to come through on Wednesday. Now it's a cold front, yes, by definition, it is not going to do much for our temperatures. We're still going to have an above normal day. We could have some cloud cover and maybe an isolated shower too, but I think the majority of us will be dry and we'll have the northeast winds begin kicking in for us as we head into Wednesday afternoon once that front passes. And we have a front, another front, a warm one that's going to lift back north. And by Thursday morning, we've got some cloud cover to start the day and we've still got those above normal temperatures. But if you look close enough, could have an isolated shower or thunderstorm in the first half of our Thursday. Then we're expected to be hot. Those south winds may kick back up again with gusts 20, 30 miles an hour. And we're going to be dry initially. And then as we head later into the day, we're looking at a wave that could trigger some additional isolated to widely scattered showers and thunderstorms. So you can see on the future track, similar to what we were looking at last night, we're not looking at a bunch of activity or a lot of rainfall, but at least some is out there. And a few of us may get some showers. And thankfully, it's not our only chance of rain. We'll talk about that in just a moment. So again, today highs mid upper 80s, maybe some low 90s. And of course, those breezy conditions with sunny skies. Winds will calm down as we go into the overnight. Skies will be clear and we'll fall back into the upper 50s and low 60s overnight tonight. As we head into our Wednesday, again, a few clouds and then maybe an isolated shower or two if we're lucky. Temperatures a little cooler, low 80s. And once the front passes through, some of us may fall back into the 70s. So still above normal, but a little bit cooler than what we're expecting today and what we're expecting into our Thursday. And we'll take a look at the next 10 days. So random shower maybe on Wednesday. Isolated shower, a storm, better chances late Thursday into the overnight. And then we'll have those pop up storm chances all the way through Sunday. And our temperatures again staying quite hot, staying quite above normal. We get into Monday and Tuesday. We are dry. We are warm. And then Wednesday, a week from tomorrow, we have another cold front, but this one means business. It's going to bring us at least some rain chances. They're not looking great right now, which I know is the news we don't need, but it will also bring us seasonable temperatures, which will make it feel downright cold next week compared to now as we fall back into the low 70s and eventually the upper 60s. Elise? All right, thanks, Chris. And don't forget, you can be the first to know about the day's weather with the KOAM Sky Watch weather app. You can get severe weather updates sent straight to your phone free of charge. It's available in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. Just search for the KOAM Sky Watch weather app. Well, stick around. We're making worth the weight cabbage soup in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. We'll be right back. 
Well, today's Mr. Food recipe is a dish that's been handed down in Howard's family for generations. Now, the original recipe had to be simmered for hours, but with the shortcut version, you can enjoy the same great taste in much less time. Howard's showing us the recipe for worth the wait cabbage soup in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. If your mother or grandmother is a great cook and you haven't learned how to make all of their family favorites yet, you really need to do something about it. If you don't, those classic recipes that you grew up with could be lost forever. So here's what I suggest. If by some chance she has the recipes written down, sit with her and watch her make them. It's important to do this because the recipe is probably splattered, tattered, and torn, making it nearly impossible to read. Beyond that, I wouldn't be surprised if your mom or grandma made it a bit different to make it her very own. Now, I want to share with you a recipe for cabbage soup that I grew up with. It's a hearty old world dish that my grandmother got from her mom. Back then she made it because it only cost pennies to make a big pot full. Today we make it because it's so darn good. If you like my grandmother's recipe for what we call worth the way cabbage soup, just go online now. After that, make sure you start documenting all your family favorites so you don't lose a lifetime of recipes. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found Grandma Rose's way. That's my grandmother. For you to say, ooh, it's so good. We well, can find this recipe along with a lot more good food from the Mr. Food Test Kitchen online. Just go to our website. Of course, that's koamnewsnow.com. Now here's a look at the four state market prices. All right, so again, today hot, maybe even some record highs out west. And tomorrow, cold front comes in, maybe a stray shower too. A little cooler, but still above normal. We heat back up Thursday, isolated shower storm in the morning. Slightly better chances for isolated showers and storms late Thursday, then into Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So not everybody will see rain, but there's some out there. Another cold front next week actually brings us fall like temperatures and some additional rain chances. Looks like we just got to get through this week and then we get those fall temperatures finally. Yeah, and we need the rain. Let's yes, we get we some do. of that as well. All righty, and what do you have for us later on, Dow? A lot's coming up at five. Shingles is a painful virus that appears as a rash and can sometimes lead to serious complications. One in three Americans will get shingles in their lifetime, and in about 8% of people, it can spread to their eye. Well, now a new study is showing promising treatment results. Plus, early voting begins in parts of the four states. We're going to hear from voters in Jasper County about their decision to cast their ballots early. And in recognition of National School Bus Safety Week, McDonald County Schools is training students to help bus drivers in case of an emergency. Join us, KOAM News at 5. All right, absolutely. Thanks, Joe. And that's the news for now. Thank you for joining us. Have a great rest of your day.